Hello and welcome to the quarterfinals of the MTG Grudge Match here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. On the left of your screen, we've got Peter Grub facing off against Tim Landale on the right of your screen. I'm Ben Swartz, joined here in the booth by Ray Punzlon, uh, and looks like Tim Landale is going to get things started with a Seachrome Coast. Tim Landale we saw earlier in this tournament playing a blue-white Planeswalker deck. I'm interested to see what Peter brought to this tournament. Yeah, and I believe the deck lists are somewhere floating around. We'll get them eventually. Looks like Peter, a blue-white land, can't really tell. It could either be... Looks like uh, he's going to think twice. So, so maybe it's a blue-white control deck, splash black, or maybe a solar flare deck. Um, we should sh we should see pretty quickly. But Tim Tim does not have black for sure. He's on all planeswalkers. All then right. we see the two-two hexproof flyer for three. So he might be blue-white aggro. He could be. And Landale's going to make quick timely reinforcements just to get three tokens. Yeah, the 2 2 hex, uh, hexproof guy is when he attacks a 4 4 fly token comes into play. He has hexproof, but he isn't uh, unblockable or anything. No other sort of evasion on there, but. Yeah, when I first played with him, my friend had a proxy and he explained to me the card. I thought he had flying. Or something. Like this, and like, I, just this card's a lot better. I just attacked it into something and it and died. Uh, which kind of sucked. But, I mean, here, here Tim Landale's reading that card. Yeah, and wants to make see sure. If it's got. Now here's four mana here. Hero, Hero Blade. Blade Hold. Yeah, definitely a blue-white aggro deck here. And Dismember's going to take care of Hero. Tim dropping down to 16, but still going to have his guys back for defense. Tim plays land number five. Let's see what Planeswalker he's got. Looks like Elspeth Terrell. It's probably going to create three more tokens. Or he's going to gain... Oh yeah, he's got to gain two life because then he can Nevernerl's disc. Mm -hmm. uh, next, next turn, destroy all non-token, non-land permanents. <coughs> See here, Peter is going to play uh, Oblivion Ring on to Elspeth. So that'll take care of Elspeth, and let's see if if Peter can can get an attack going in. No, it looks like he'll just pass the turn back to Tim. Does Tim have another another Planeswalker? And it looks like, yeah, he's got another Elspeth Terrell. I assume he's going to do the same thing. He's going to gain three life. Get the get the ultimate. I mean, it, he, probably, he probably won't ultimate. He'll probably, like, minus to it. Yeah, ultimating, yeah, is a lot worse right now just because of the Oblivion Ring cap holding the other Elspeth. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, no, actually, it's really good because uh, Elspeth is a minus six, right? Is it? I'm, I'm not positive. I thought it was. Uh, my, I thought it might be minus five because I felt like when you uh, use Elspeth's ultimate, it stuck around. We'll find out in a second. Or to chat if you guys are there. There, you can let us know. Yeah, Elspeth Terrell. Yeah, you're right. It's minus five. Um, so it would stick around, and then both of them would die because of the Oblivion Ring. See what Peter's going to do here. Being against the aggro deck, Tim feels like he's pretty comfortable. It looks like... Uh, Peter's going to attack and probably get a 4-4 four, four flyer. He probably has another 2-2 two, two guy. It doesn't make sense just to attack here unless he's trying to go for the Elspeth. We'll see who's attacking right now. What is the, what what is going on? There, there's some, there's we get an update over there on the floor just to see what's going on here. It looks like they're discussing something right there. In the meantime, let everyone know we are live with the top eight of the MPG Grudge Match. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Tim's uh, Tim's team's also in the top four of the uh, team portion of this event. He's telling me he hopes it finishes really quickly so he can go catch a, catch a football game. The Eagles, yeah. that's a football they, team. Yeah, the Eagles, they start, <laughs> they play at 1 p.m. I think they were asking the judge, yeah, if the token could, ask, could attack Elspeth, and it can, right? As you, as you see here, I mean, Elspeth's now on two counters, so... Clearly could. And Sun Titan comes out for Peter Group, bringing back 
the recently destroyed 2-2 hexproof. So Elspeth's first ability, is that minus two or minus one? Uh, minus two. Minus, minus two plus two minus five. So he can't really get, to f he can't get a way to get his Elspeth exactly to five unless it gets attacked. It's at two right now, so it got beat up last turn by the token. So, All right, another discussion coming on here. I think the players are just deep in thought. I mean, what is Landale going to do here? He's in a, a little bit of a tight spot. He needs like a Gideon. Even Gideon doesn't really get rid of Sun Titan. He's like an Oblivion Ring to take out the Sun Titan. I get like his best hope right now is probably. If he has a Day of Judgment or something. Day of Judgment and... Probably plus two. Yeah, plus two, your, yeah plus two first with your Elspeth and Day of Judgment. If, yeah, if he's got a Day of Judgment, but I don't think he does. I think I see a Dismember in his hand. Um, yeah, Tim's still thinking over his options. So, Tim minus twos. Elspeth to create uh, three more tokens, so he's got a total of four tokens. Then he's going to tap seven mana and cast Karn Liberated. He's going to use Karn to get rid of Oblivion Ring, bringing back Elspeth. All right, so this, is gonna, <laughs> this looks pretty nice here for Tim. He's going to gain four life, it looks like. And so Karn, Elspeth, and a bunch of tokens on defense. I mean, Karn's going to die, though. Yeah, Karn's going to fall down to... Because the Geist of St. Traft, uh, mm -hmm. creating a 4-4 four, four flyer. So, but I mean, it does mean that, that Elspeth is going to stick around to be able to ultimate... What Peter decides to do here. Now, if Elspeth does ultimate, Peter does have a ink buff nexus to finish it off. That's true, but I mean, then Landale is. I mean, th then then all Peter has is lands, and Landale has four guys, right? Like Peter still does have three cards in hand, but it's much better than than. It's it's like the same thing as a wrath to destroy my Elspeth, right? It's like, yeah. and I get to keep my creatures, but you have my Elspeth. I mean. So yeah, it looks like Peter's going to attack Elspeth with his two ground guys and attack uh, Karn Liberated with the flyers. So so Tim's going to trump walk. Uh, actually, not going to trump walk. He's going to trade with the Geist, and he's going to trump walk the Sun Titan. Protecting his Elspeth. Still able to ultimate. I, I don't, don't ex I don't know why he wouldn't just uh, he wouldn't just trump, because like he's going to ultimate Elspeth next turn, almost definitely, right? Like... Maybe he wanted to make sure in case it's like an O-ring for Elspeth. You're willing I mean, I to guess, but like, you're, you're throwing away two tokens. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> O-ring for Elspeth. So okay. there's an O-ring for Elspeth. So now Tim draws his card for the turn. Now he's got to, got to think. Uh, this is six mana, Consecrated Sphinx. That was a good draw. And... Ooh. Looks this like looks that's going to get... Think twice in response. I think that's going to be okay. Yeah. Did that response to Consecrated Sphinx to avoid Tim drawing extra cards? Tim's going to try to refuel here. I mean, Consecrated Sphinx is exactly the card you need. And I mean, like, Landale isn't completely out of this game. He's got Consecrated Sphinx that he just cast. But, I mean, there's no, not really that, uh, that aggressive cards. Uh, from Peter. I mean, he's got the Sun Titan, but that's going to get Trump <laughs> for at least a turn. And Tim's and at 26, so he doesn't have... Yeah, and t Tim has a little bit more time to grab a Planeswalker or something. 
start getting control back of this game. Another Karn, possibly. Oh, hey, Rashad Miller. Hey, what's going on? Is this the quarterfinals of the MTG Grudge Match? This is, in fact, the quarterfinals of the MTG Grudge Match. Thanks for joining us, Rashad. You're welcome. Uh, worm coil engine here now for Tim. This board's Tim, looking better and better. Yeah, Tim keeps pumping out these six drops, and that's something we've talked about all this, this entire weekend. The power of the six drops in the standard format. Consecrated Sphinx, Worm Coil Engine, Sun Titan. You know, they, they really show that, that perhaps some of the traditional aggro decks, like Tempered Steel, that I don't think there are any in top eight, are really put I, I down by the six drops. there is one, one possibly. There there's one be. in the top 24 of standard. I don't know if the, there's one in the top eight uh, here. Looks like Tim has another six drop in his hand. You just keep them coming. That's how you. That's how you play Magic: The Gathering. You play, play six blue drop. white. <laughs> get a bunch of six drops. You get the six mana, and then you start tapping out. What What's better, Ky- Kaiga slash Maloku or Consecrated Sphinx slash Sun Titan slash Worm Coil Engine? Which Which suite of six drops are better? Well, Maloku's a five. Yeah, I know. So I I can't answer that question, unfortunately. You have to try again. Which is better, Kaiga or Consecrated Sphinx? I'm liking the Consecrated Sphinx right now. <laughs> Well, can, do I have a way to sacrifice my Kega to greater t- good to take control of your consecration? All right, it looks like Gideon that Tim Landell is casting is going to get dissipated yeah. by Pure Group. That's a reprint from the newest set in Estrad. Uh, Mirage removes the card. Out. Yep. The removability is pretty relevant in this format, considering they use a Sun Titan along with a lot of flashback, flashback cards yeah. like Forg- Forbidden Alchemy. The whole graveyard matters thing that mm-hmm. they were trying to push during Innistrad. So perhaps here Peter's going to get buried under this card disadvantage. I mean, Tim was able to get a quick life lead in the beginning thanks to his Elspeth Carells. But, you know, even though he's got Sun Titan, how does Sun Titan fare against Con- Consecrated Sphinx and Worm Coil Engine? I would say it doesn't do well against either. In general. In general? Yeah. Tim's just going to keep in, <laughs> putting out big spells here with a Consecrated Sphinx that stays out there the rest of this game. Yeah, I mean, Consecrated Sphinx has been around for three turns. You know, I don't see how Peter really needed a quick, like, double dismember or Oblivion Ring, but he already used two of his Oblivion Rings on, on Elspeth Trials earlier in this game, so... Think twice for Tim. <clears throat> Does he really need more cards? Yes. You always need more six drops. That's true. You just draw more six drops, and then you play them. Another thing twice for Tim. Tim's going to draw another card for his turn. Looks like he's got eight cards in hand. Eight Nine cards in now. Hand. And it's time. <laughs> or it's time to start attacking? Is that what time it is? Looks like it. I mean, now he's got two two blockers. Right? Yeah, Tim started out when he casted the Consecrated Sphinx with one card in his hand. Now he's way ahead of Peter. Well, that's what that guy does. He gets you way ahead. Is there a reason why Tim didn't think twice on a turn? Does he not want those extra two cards? Because hmm. he already thought about it. Oh. No need to think twice? Yeah, you don't, we don't need to stay in a tank that long. So Gideon's going to get attempted to be mana leaked. Tim's going to pay I think that's a good choice, paying for the Maui. So now does Gideon force Sun Titan in? I guess he has to, right? Or become a 6 6. Just become a 6 6 for the turn. Or it's just like not activated. Tim just uh, bring it. <laughs> Did Tim just not draw? Uh, he just. Oh. Okay. Looks like he remembered in time and will draw two from Peter. Peter's draw step. I mean, he does have a lot of cards in his hand. Maybe, you know. Yeah, he was still organizing while Peter was trying to rush ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so now Peter has to attack Gideon. But that 4-4 actually does not have to attack Gideon. That's uh, an interesting thing. It probably wants to, though. I mean, I guess. I guess it really doesn't matter either because it was a 4-6 and just waiting around. I mean, but what if Peter has, uh, like, a dismember to take out the con- uh, consequences? But Tim definitely now? has dismember. The way he's blocking. I mean, not necessarily. He's 
see here though. There's yeah. uh, four would, mana. Wouldn't surprise me if he did, but. Here, a blade hold. Again, more tokens that don't have to attack Gideon. Yeah. I think Peter has a theme to his deck. The Dodge Gideon theme? It looks like end of turn, Landale's gonna go ahead and dismember Sun Titan to kill it, like you said, Ray. There goes Sun Titan. Peter's board's looking sadder and sadder. Now what does Tim do on his turn? Does he start getting aggressive? Does he just plus two Gideon again? Plus two Gideon and trade off for those creatures. He doesn't really have to worry about time or anything, right? I mean, he's got seven cards in hand. Oblivion Ring, is that really necessary? When you have eight to ten cards in your hand, you should just try to get some of them out of your hand. That's what I think. When you have eight to ten cards and your opponent has... None. Zero to one card. So Tim plays another Planeswalker, Elspeth Terrell here. Has a bunch of blockers now. Yeah, he's going to minus two it, create three soldier tokens. Plus two Gideon. Gideon's at ten. Still killable. You know, it's not hard to kill a ten loyalty Gideon. Tim also has another I'm consecrated Sphinx in his hand. <laughs> I mean, I've done it in limited. So Landale's going to attack in there with Worm Coil Engine. It's going to get chub block. I mean, he was going to die anyway, the Geist. And Peter scoops it up right there. Congratulations, Tim. One day, one game closer to advancing to the semis. Now, Tim's also on a team. Yeah. He's on he a team. With... He's not sponsored. He paid, their team paid for themselves. And, of course, we'd like to thank ChannelFireball.com for helping us bring you MTG Grudge Match here in Philadelphia. All, for all of your Innistrad single needs, go to ChannelFireball.com. They've got all Innistrad singles in stock for the lowest price on the web. Go to ChannelFireball.com. Oh, I get it. It's like a television channel where you watch a fireball. Well, no, I believe it has to do with the, the combo channel and fireball. Oh. Two-card combo. I double get it. I think I think um, Luis Scott Vargas may have had something to do with the naming. No, I think it's the guy who owns it. Oh, no, it company. seemed very punny to me. That's, How's that and, punny? And that's not my uh, Filipino accent. That, I'm using. <laughs> okay. that was mine. Sorry. It's like a double play. It's like Channel Fireball and Channel Fireball. I don't get it. The thing I said, then the thing you said. I didn't get what you said. I just said what I said because I didn't understand you. It's a television. Okay. They have channels. They have channels. Like channels of a river? Almost. Except you watch television shows. I don't have a television. It's the picture box. <laughs> <laughs> you know that magic black box, Ben? In your house where the cartoons come from? <laughs> <laughs> They're not actually in your house. <laughs> Wait, really? Bugs Bunny isn't actually living in my house? He, actually, he does. He, he visits you on occasion. It's um, Once a week at 7 a.m. and Saturday mornings. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't interact with you at all. But I thought Dora was my friend. <laughs> in blue? In blue's clues? What do you think about double face cards? This, this card has two faces. I like these cards. I saw, because uh, I haven't seen much of these singles, so I've been walking around the draft tables just collecting them just to look at cards. <laughs> That's a werewolf. Ah, ooh, werewolves of magic. <laughs> ah, ooh. I thought you were going to sing um, some song. Ooh, werewolves. I forgot the werewolf song by some artist of recent months. Oh, or recent no. past year. She Wolf, I think it was actually called, but I forget who sings it. I was singing Werewolves of London, but I changed London to Magic. Could you sing it for us? The Gigi's oh. Life crowd would love it. All of it. Do you need a beat? I do. Ben is a beatboxer by trade. <laughs> that is true. That is my, uh, <laughs> but I charge. I charge for that service.
And without the deck list, not sure what kind of changes they are doing. But I wonder if Peter Grube really expected this blue white deck from Tim. I, I don't think anybody really expected the blue white control deck. They yeah, a lot blue of white it, control is kind of dead. A lot of people just expected forbidden alchemy decks. A lot. Yeah, it had a lot of hype around it. The blue white deck that Peter's playing, I've actually seen uh, around too. Though we haven't seen it on camera throughout the weekend, really, or I haven't really noticed. But was it ever on camera? I don't think so. I never yeah. saw it on camera. That's something I didn't expect. Uh, a lot. Of, I mean, I. I expected to see, but didn't see it in camera. Mono red deck, as usual, at the beginning of every format, there's a mono red deck that everyone <laughs> likes to play. Foods, yeah. You like that werewolf card, Rashad? It's like Watch Wolf with issues. That's yeah, intimidating. It's better than Watch Wolf. It looks like play started here in game two. See Chrome Coast for Tim. Peter would know uh, no, no action turn. at the beginning of the turn. I'm wondering if his curve starts has anything under three. It could have that that one blue guy who's got hexproof and unblockable. But doesn't look like he even has a four drop here. I think I think all of his um, one and two drops, or at least his two drops, are in the form of counter magic. Okay. Which is fine, in my opinion. I'm wondering if he's playing the new land, the the blue-white land that removes a creature from your graveyard and puts out a 1-1 one -one token. That seems like a really powerful card. Looks like what white sun zenith for Tim. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh. Nope, no cats. Oh. I think Tim's fine with getting rid of the mana leak out of Peter's hand. I mean, probably not. Like, well, at the end of turn, it seems fine. Okay. Probably still like a dissipate. It's like it's it's not as if this Elspeth's definitely going to resolve. Wouldn't be surprised if it did, but yeah. I mean, Peter doesn't have a counter spell. He would have slammed dissipate here. Oh, he does have a negate actually. I wonder why, what is he considering negating instead of that Elspeth? Well, he does have other um, other Planeswalkers. Yeah, but... The I Karn mean, and... Uh, but any Planeswalker that sits around for long enough is just... Yeah, especially yeah. if you've got uh, Consecrated Sphinx in your hand. Like, you counter Landale's spell, make him tap out and play Consecrated Sphinx, and, I mean, now Landale's in real trouble, because getting rid of that Consecrated Sphinx in blue-white Five mana days. here. Oh, mind control. Mind control. Oh, wow. See? <laughs> Getting wow. rid of it in blue white may be a little difficult, but taking it, taking your stuff in blue white. I'm surprised Tim's playing mind hard. control. A lot of people usually play Volition Rings in that slot if they're looking for that the type Bolivian of Oblivion Ring. I hope there's a negate in Tim Landale's hand, else the, the if he's got a, two mana isn't going to do enough. If he's got like a bounce spell, he could bounce his mind control and have. In Peter, response. Yeah, Peter, take out his own Consecrated Sphinx. I don't know if there are too many bounce spells. Yeah, I don't know what the played. permanent There's bounce spells are disperse. It's the only one. Disperse. Yeah, it's not Into the Royal. <laughs> just doesn't feel the same anymore. Into the Royal was pretty great. <laughs> Tim's going to mana leak it and get that paid for. Now, I think Tim's probably got an Oblivion Ring of his own, so he's going to cast that now. He's going to Oblivion Ring the Oblivion Ring? Yep. Oblivion Ring, Oblivion Ring to get back a Consecrated Sphinx. Let's keep trading Sphinx. this Consecrated Sphinx with each other. Should move that Oblivion Ring around and make it easier in case they forget. <laughs> now, well, maybe maybe a third Oblivion Ring will come into play, and all the other permanents will disappear, and then we'll have a draw somehow. <laughs> like the Rashad lives in this imaginary no, world. Third, just wants things to happen. What if like a that? third Oblivion <laughs> Ring comes down to get rid of the Volition Rings again, and then the Consecrated Sphinx flies back to <laughs> Tim's hand, or Peter's hand? <laughs> no, it just gets destroyed by something. And then a fourth Oblivion Ring comes down for the draw. Looks All like right. a Geist. I'm just saying that there's the potential of someone causing a draw here. 
Is that going to cause a grudge match to crash? <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll just play another game. I think these rounds may or may not be untimed. They have to be untimed. Geist of St. Traff for, for Peter. But Tim Tim's still in possession of the consecrated Sphinx. Five mana here for Gideon. Gideon's going to get mana leak. Mana leak. Peter getting full value out of his leaks. And a turn think twice. Tim Landau's going to think four times, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, Peter only thought once. That's true. And Landale thought twice. And Landale thought twice. And he's going to think again during the draw step, obviously. <laughs> Lando has a discard. Peter Groves, he got a little fist pump there. A little minor, minor victories. <laughs> I mean, who, who's got the consecrated Sphinx? Uh, well, who only has seven cards instead of eight? But who's got seven cards and who's got four? Up, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Up to nine. See, nine cards to six. It's not totally unfair. Oblivion. Oblivion. Oh, 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 oh. Rashad's oh. dream's about to happen. Mana leak. Oh, oh. I think he's got to pay for that mana leak. I have to guess. Why doesn't he get the Oblivion? Now right? the just has to get rid of this Consecrated Sphinx and another Oblivion ring, and we're, we're golden, <laughs> and, and right? And the Geist. And, yeah, the Geist of St. Traff. The Geist has Hex Crew. Oh, yeah, he could target his own. <laughs> Man, life is getting hard here. Ooh, Tim Lando just snuck a draw step oh. in there. Oh. Uh, Tim should have slammed a land down. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, this is my main phase. Tim should have been like, no, oh, even though. Oh, you Rashad. That's three mana. Your dream is getting closer and closer. Oh, 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 so many oblivion rings. Mana leak. Something. It's just, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. These creatures are going to die. These oblivion rings are going to start targeting stuff somehow. There's going to be a draw. Or Magic Online is going to crash. One or the other. Does Magic Online actually crash when that happens? I don't I don't think it does. I think... It realizes that it's a draw? I don't know. Like you if you, you want to try that yield, out? If you just auto-yield to everything? Nah. We'll, that, <laughs> we'll, we'll give something for the viewers to try themselves. Let's see what happens here now. Your dream's like so close, but yet so far. <laughs> So, Geist of St. Traff is going to get in there. The 4 4 flyer. Yeah, Tim probably just takes this. Falls to 8. I think he should block. He should block the 4 4 flyer. Because at worst, if it's a 2 for 1 for Tim. Or Sun Tide in here. Is Six man. Tiny? Yeah. Is there anything to get back? No. Was, he, was he hoping that the guy? He's hoping would? that the guys would die. But I mean, he did mana leak the previous on, on Tim's turn to just tap him out so he could resolve that Sun Titan, which is kind of a big deal. But See, all we need is a day of judgment, and then a living ring, and then we have a draw. But do either players want that right now? I don't think either either of them do. I think I want it right now. I mean, okay. And the, and the only thing that matters is what Rashad wants, actually. Yes. <laughs> Looks like Karn liberated for Tim. That's going to get dissipated. And does, uh, yeah, Tim, ha Tim has a mana leak. So Karn liberated perhaps going to liberate that Sun Titan, if you know what I mean. Yep, Sun Titan goes down. And if Karn liberates everything, including himself, and then one Oblivion Ring, what is I don't think that's you? possible. <laughs> you hope for things. <laughs> the more permanents are going to the table, your dream goes further and further away. If Karn only removes Oblivion Rings from play, <laughs> and then he ultimates, <laughs> then, then yes, then it will be a draw. draw. Yes. But he already removed the Sun Titan, which can get an Oblivion Ring. But there's no graveyard because you start a new game. I start games with, with Oblivion Rings in my graveyard and Black Vice in play. I love the Chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so. so activate Ink Moth Nexus for Peter. 
He's gonna attack with all his guys. Well, he only has one guy. All everyone oh. coming towards <laughs> the car. <laughs> all of his guys. Everyone needs to go towards car. Let's see how Tim blocks here. Probably just block the 2-2. Two -two. This car's gonna go down anyways. Car didn't really even seem that good in that position. I mean it's a vindicate. For seven mana. And it's also a, a fog. Yeah. A um, you just got a card every turn. It's just Lily. That, that, that could get a little annoying. Five, six, another Sun Titan? Yep. Like, oh, sure. You Bring got... back my Geist to St. Craft. Players are just exchanging blows in the form of their six drops and higher. And so, Tim's got like 20 cards in hand. 10 cards. That's sort of like 20 if you change the first number. If I transform the number, flip it over in half. Sitting at 12 life, lots of cards in his hands. Can't make up most of them. <laughs> well, the lighting is a little bit bad for seeing the cards in hand, but it's great for seeing the cards in play. So, can't really complain too much about that. And we've got what, 720p? Yeah, we are to 720p. Wow, that's impressive. Tim. All right, oblivion ring here. Five oblivion rings on the table. Are we close to uh, oblivion glory? Oblivion ring glory here. I don't, I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> We're gonna think, think once. Tim's gonna think twice. Discard three cards. Three lands. Yeah, Tim's, uh, Tim's had control of the Consecrated Sphinx for the most of this game. <laughs> Think twice. Tim's thinking what he wants to do. Maybe maybe Peter's hoping to deck Tim Lander. The new plan, and then he slams down in Jace. <laughs> <laughs> Jace memory adept. Mill you. Peter's gonna flash back think twice. Tim doesn't look like he wants to draw. He's got too many good cards. Maybe he has all the perfect ones already. It's kinda like looting, right? He has to be able to win this game with just a consecrated thing, right? I mean, it's very possible, like he's out carding Peter like Four to one. Another Ink Broth Nexus for Tim. Actually, now like t ten to one, but he could win with those Nexuses as well. Just poison you out. I mean, Tim is at twelve life, so he's got to be a little careful. But as long as he doesn't screw things up too much, I don't see how he can lose this game. Planeswalker or some sort? Five minutes? Looks like for Jace Memory Adept. I see in Tim's hand. Tim's playing all the Planeswalkers. Boom. Here's Jace's appearance. So Snapcaster Mage for Peter. Oh, what what are what are we what are we gonna Snapcast? Well, um, some sort of no, <laughs> doesn't matter. It's gonna get dissipated. So, don't you wait for these 
Don't you dissipate the spell to get snap casted? Because, I mean, how much do we care about that 2 1? Maybe enough just to dissipate it. He knows that Peter doesn't have any counters in his hand. <laughs> so it looks like Tim is going to mill Peter for 10. He's going for all the angles. He's just trying to even up the library, you know, so that the libraries have the same amount of cards. Looks like he milled the Think Twice as one of the flashback cards, one of the Graveyard Matters cards. Yeah, Tim, take Peter's a peek deck. now. Yeah, eventually, all those Think Twices are just going to be draw one for Peter and draw nothing for Tim because he's afraid of decking himself. Yeah, Tim's already discarding here. But Tim will always choose to draw two from the draw step. Just so he doesn't have to discard more. It's like loot two or it's like over necroing. How often do you how much do you over necro? A lot. Okay. Like five or ten. <laughs> it's like five It depends. Let's so you just over necro and then win next turn? I mean, am I playing Necro Illusions Donate? Yeah, I'll draw a bunch of cards. <laughs> I'll draw a lot of cards. And then ship the donate to you. Peter's on a new plan. He's on the attack you plan. Is he attacking Jace or no? Oh, we have the deck list now. I have to think that... Jace has the, the minus... The mill you for 10 is... Zero. Is a zero. Plus one, draw a card, mill, somebody won. We've got the, the deck lists. Yeah, this game looks like it's going to be over soon for somebody. Dismember one of the... The 4-4. The 4-4 four, four. Four, four token. So I think uh, Jace is going to live. So now three. <laughs> yeah, Jace could some take some loyalty, But that's all it takes to stick around and mill ten more cards. Another uh, Geist of St. Traft. For Peter. Tim, Tim looks like he just throws a Glacial Fortress, gonna mill Peter mill for 10. 10. Wonder how many cards are left in Peter's deck. The Peter's gotta be pretty looks, close now. It's like a little over 10. A little over 10? Yeah, it doesn't look like as many of those mills. So, how many Jaces is uh, Tim playing over there? I think he's playing none in the main deck. He's playing one on the sideboard. One board. the sideboard. It's a one of. He's playing Jace, Karn, Elspeth, Gideon. Is there any other Planeswalker he's missing in his colors? No, I don't think so. I think it's everything? None of that matter. <laughs> There's another the, Karn in his hand, too. Without the most five, powerful. Six, seven, eight. Oh, he only has nine cards, looks like. What can Landale do here? Maybe Gideon? <coughs> and there's or the Karn. other Karn. Let's see what Karn removes this time. Uh, uh, Ink Moth Nexus, it looks like. Yeah, Tim has multiple uh, Ink Moths on defense. I think all lands are in Peter's hand. Game is a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this game's near over. I'm just gonna remove my Jace. <laughs> and go. You missed Rashad dreaming there was gonna be a draw with all these Oblivion rings somehow. <laughs> just enough Oblivion ring action. There's gonna end up a draw here. Oh, are all the Oblivion rings on Oblivion rings? Uh, yeah, every... Oh, no, one of them's on the Sun Titan now. But there's five Oblivion Rings in play. All right. So Tim's going to block the Geist of St. Traft. Uh, Jace is going to go down. Karn's still in play, though. Karn can start plus fouring. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think Tim's has stopped consecrated sensing. Did you notice if you drew, drew uh, it doesn't look through? like it. Plus four. Sea Chrome Coast. What does Tim have? Does he have another Planeswalker? Worm Coil Legend. Worm Legend. Yeah, this game is... Snapcaster Mage, cool. though, in Peter's hand, so you can Snapcaster back one of those many cards that was milled with Jace Memory Adept. Tim's going to let this go by. That Mind Control is also a one of in Tim's deck. So the one of Mind Control was big. <laughs> one of Jace. Probably yep. going to lock that game up. Not exactly sure how many cards left in Peter's deck. But it's like seven. Game zero over. Tim's going to discard that Day of Judgment it during his discard step. It looks like Tim's not going to take the extra cards. That is the new land. That is the Moorhead Haunt. Moorland Haunt. Yeah, blue-white land. Remove a creature from your graveyard to put a 1-1 flying spirit into play. Peter, think twice. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's going to flash back another thing twice. He's really digging, trying to dig out of this. Now with only like, down to like four six cards, four, I four, think. four cards. Yeah. It's interesting. Tim has a lot of cards in hand, but not a lot of nine land permanents in hand. Unless we count. I don't even know who's Oblivion Rings or whom's. I think all of the Oblivion Rings are, right. are Peters. Oh, no, I think no, they're no, Tim's. No, they're, they're all Tim's. Tim's. They're all, all the Tim's. rings that are in play are Tim's. You just Nazgul'd all the rings? Yep. Looks <laughs> look like Tim's gonna plus four again. Put Karn at 11. Karn's ultimate is 16. Is it 16? It's plus, it's plus four. It starts at seven. Uh, minus 14. Religion. Minus 14. I mean, it's not like Tim really wants to, to restart this game anyway. Yeah. Well, it's nice to have an option. Maybe, maybe something happens where it looks like he's going to lose the race. Yeah, maybe. Peter makes a spirit. Now Tim is going to draw two from his Consecrated Sphinx. Holding down the fort. I like Peter's deck. It has the theme of tap and attacking. I think he has all of the tap and attacking cards available on standard. In this deck. All in the same deck. Every single one. Let's see. I think there's only two. Is that also good? Does it? What color is that? It's green. It's like Hero Bladehold, but it's a 3-4, but it attacks, it puts oh. two, two wolves into play, so there's another creatures in your graveyard, tapped and attacking. I don't think Missing. that's a bad card. I think it card's actually very good. So Landale's going to use minus three on Karn to get rid of Hero Bladehold. And Hero's gone. And attacking with his Worm Coil Hunter. I think it's going to be really funny if Landale ends up needing to start a new game. <laughs> no, I think he's going to be able to gain enough life with this worm coil where the race is, you know, now unwinnable. Cards versus life. Is Peter looking at a chump block here? Oh, he's going to shrink down the worm coil. Playing the math game. 
I don't. Th- I don't think this is. Uh, <laughs> Is that, is that the math game? I mean, it might be the math game, but I don't think it'll make a difference. Oh, wait, there's another one. <laughs> oh, wait, and the there's more. So how many Worm Girls is he playing? That's a third one, I think? Uh, he plays three. Three Worm Girls. Tim and right. I should be up to 14 life now. Peter is down to three cards. Tim's at 14. There's another Oblivion ring. Oh. Peter's trying to oh, save again. <laughs> oh, no, dissipate. Well, I, mean, he, I mean, he can't do it because he has to make a new choice. Snapcaster major in response to dissipate. Give flashback to one of my guys, maybe. Does Peter have another dissipate? Yeah, he does. In the yard? If, you know, if Peter left his dead judgments in and he thinks he can resolve one, then he could have used the Oblivion Ring to cause a drop. Nope, because of the, the, the tokens. Worm, yeah, the Worm Pearl Engine is going to make some tokens. How many cards left in Landell's deck? Landell's pretty low, but he's stopped just drawing with Consecrated Sphinx, so... I mean, it's not as bad as Peter who has three yeah. cards in his hand. Looks like he wants to think twice, though. He's got that few, or that many cards. I'd have to say more than three. Yeah. That's for sure. Oblivion ring on Oblivion ring to bring back Karn to RFG something probably. RFG, RFG the uh, world at heart. The little land to make token clear. Peter's going to block. Oh, looks like Tim's going for the double win. What's the double win? Life, life and, and mill. And mill. I would have sent with my with my ink moth nexus to try to triple win. <laughs> the triple get, crown. Yeah, get the perfect. The quadruple crown in moto where they time two. <laughs> you have to time it just right. Yeah. Could he go for the trifecta? He has ink, ink moth nexus in yeah. his deck, right? He, he does, yeah. I don't think he has the right timing, though. Uh, he can't, I don't think he has enough attacks in the number. <laughs> and that's it. And Tim Landale advances to the semifinals here at MTG Grudge Match, defeating Peter Group two to Justin's zero. Time expires too. Really? There's a time limit. So these rounds are timed. That's interesting. 